day five, October 10th. I can talk real loud right now because we're probably more than a half a mile from the spot that we're going to. Uh, this is a spot that we, I showed you in the spring if you're watching the off season episodes where I planted a cornfield up on a ridge way back in the middle of nowhere, put electric fence around it in order to protect it from the deer. But we're gonna show you what the aftermath of that project is. It did a pretty good job of protecting it from the deer, but the raccoons had a heyday in there. Anytime you plant corn in the middle of nowhere surrounded by timber, you know, I should have known better. Those raccoons are gonna rip it up. So they ate a lot of the corn during the summer, but there's still quite a bit there. And uh, Tyler and I went in there yesterday and took all the electric fencing down. It was pretty rough and starting to, starting to get knocked down by the deer. But uh, the deer have been in there quite a bit and they're really using it. It's far enough away from any spot that I've had a camera that I really don't know what's gonna pop out in there. And I guess that's the fun of it. I'll bet you there's no corn within a mile of this spot maybe even just a little bit more than that. So any deer that want corn, this is gonna be in this circle, this is where they're gonna be heading toward. So anything could happen tonight, it should be fun. 63 degrees, uh, breezy, southeasterly wind. We had a lot of rain go through today, a couple inches of rain. So uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun walking down this muddy road. We got a mud road that goes back along the border of the property, back into the gate. Uh, looking forward to it, so uh, I'm gonna make the slippery walk. standing in the Milo right now. There's about four or five acres of it here that I planted uh, back in the spring. If you remember, uh, during the off-season series, I talked about comparing Milo to corn. And the deer don't touch the Milo during the summer, whereas they'll hit the corn pretty hard during the summer. But in most places, they'll start eating these little seeds as soon as they get soft and doughy. They'll take shape and start to get soft. Well, on this farm, they haven't figured out yet that this stuff is edible. So they, they didn't converge on it like they will once they figure out what this stuff is. I would say by the time that corn is gone, or right around that, that time frame, they're gonna start hitting the sorghum really hard. And then we'll see a whole different, uh, I would say, acceptance of this. Now you look at it and heck, I don't, we won't hardly see a single head that's been nipped at by the deer. It just kind of gives you a contrast between the, the sorghum and, and how well it did compared to the corn and how practical it might be for me long term to start getting into this stuff a little bit more than corn. Real Trees Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by RK Tractors, Ozonics, Redneck Blinds, Wasp Archery, Spot Hog Releases, RTP Outdoors, America's Best Bowstrings, Hoyman Tree Saws, and Realtree. I've got about an hour left until the end of legal shooting time, probably a little bit more than that. It's going to get dark a little bit early tonight, so that's going to uh, limit our camera light. We're also in the blind, as you can tell. and. Uh, I've got all the windows closed because it's hard to know what direction the deer are going to come to when you're sitting right on the edge of a little plot of corn like this. There's a doe out there right now about 10 yards away, just 
tearing up the corn. Uh, we had a doe and a fawn come by earlier, but they were acting a little bit spookier and they didn't come into the opening. I'm sure there's a lot of human scent, or at least there was, because uh, we took all that fencing down around the plot yesterday. The experiment is to figure out whether they love corn more than they hate human scent. And I think that we're going to find that they love corn more. The conditions aren't perfect. It's been kind of spitting rain on and off, which makes the blind a really nice home. But uh, that kind of humidity with a little bit warmer temperature, it's not always the best for deer movement. But tomorrow is supposed to be really good for colder temperatures. I'm going to hunt tomorrow evening. Uh, I'd recommend it if you can get the time off work to, to get out tomorrow evening and then all weekend should be good too. I'll probably bounce back in uh, before this episode is over with, you know, for one more interview to bring you up to date on what comes out during this last hour. But uh, so far so good. We're getting down to the wire. I'd say there's about 15 minutes left, maybe 20 minutes of camera light. We've got three deer out in front of the blind right now. There's uh, two does and a year and a half old buck. I could have probably been in the game on three does if I'd been shooting does tonight. And it would have been good for this part of the farm. It's been a while since I've shot any does over here, probably, boy, I don't know how many years, quite a few. But uh, it was really muddy getting in, and I just don't think we can get a four-wheeler back in here. So there's no sense in trying to pile up a bunch of does and then spend the rest of the night trying to get them out at best. Pretty uncomfortable with the blind. We just moved this thing last night. I mean, literally 24 hours ago, this blind was in a, in a slightly different spot. We had to open it up a little bit so we could create some shooting opportunities and move the blind out into the field a little bit more. And uh, the deer are coming out here. They're just looking at the blind a lot more than they normally would, which makes me think that they didn't come in here last night, that this is their first time in after we moved it. We'll show you anything else that happens in this last 20 minutes. Um, but. Uh, Right now, if I had to guess, I'd say that my hopes of having a shooter buck come in here are pretty slim. Uh, check back again tomorrow night. Like I said, I'm gonna hunt tomorrow night with that cold front. We're gonna go after, uh, I believe we're gonna go after that bladed 10. He was moving pretty good uh, a, a while back. So hopefully, you know, with this cold front coming through, he'll be on his feet in daylight. So come on back tomorrow and we'll keep the story going. It's that one crippled up or wounded buck that we had the trail camera pictures of down in the bottom. There's something wrong with him. I don't know if he's got a disease or if he got hit by a car or something, but if you see his front leg, it should be on our side. There's a hole in it. It's almost like some flesh-eating bacteria is getting him or something. It's, it looks really nasty. <laughs>